So ignite my faith. These broken days fix my way with your grace. When I'm such, when I'm hurt, in my hiding place, trust in your ways. Cause you're okay. On his shoulder. Cause The storms might come, but he'll never leave. Take his word, he'll forever be. Source of strength when we're running out of energy. Place your cares on his shoulders, the remedy. He'll give you strength that is needed for every task. I know he's on our side, and that's everything. In the past, he has led us even through the dark. And everything we need, we can ask. Cause I know. Good morning, Mikey. Morning, Mr. Goku. Good morning, morning. Like we're getting a little technical thing here. Or? <laughs> no. Morning, Sally. Morning, morning, everybody. <laughs> morning. <laughs> darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came around there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
On Thursday this week, the 26th of August, at approximately 7.40, the Lord called home one of our members, Shelima Ali. She was a member of the Rosha Douglas Presbyterian Church and also of the RDC. Let us observe a moment of silence in her memory. May her soul rest in peace. I now welcome Sally to prepare our hearts this morning with an introit.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of the RDC of Barrack Paul Pastoral Region, our Reverend Manandeo, Interim Minister Reverend Chance, our Presiding Elder Mr. Gokul, and our Clerk of Session Mr. Mitchell, I welcome you all to this morning's regional service that is being conducted by the RDC. We thank you for joining us this morning as we come together in praise and worship. <clears throat> the announcements are as follows. Our regional services continue every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. via our YouTube and Zoom links. We encourage you to share the links with family, friends, as well as all your other contacts. The recorded sessions are also available via the Barakpur Union YouTube page. On that note, join us next Sunday as we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Our Sunday school continues every Sunday at half past four via Zoom. And once again, do please share the link with your family and friends. And once again, those sessions are recorded so you can find them on the Barakpur Union YouTube page. The Youth Lounge was successfully launched on Friday and we will be having a second session on Friday the 10th of September and that will be the second part of the series Your Identity in Christ. So we do encourage all our youth and all those who are young at heart to join us in this initiative. These are all the announcements at this time. At this moment, I will welcome Miss Sarah to lead us in the prayer of approach. As it said in Matthew's chapter 12, Gospel, verses 28 to 30, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. Take this yoke, it is easy to bear, and this burden is light. Christ invites us to come to worship, to rest from the things that are troubling us, to learn what Christ can teach of life, to realize what we can offer to others. Let us prepare our hearts and mind to worship God. Almighty God, the founder of all wisdom, by whose power we are created and love who we are redeemed. We give the most humble thanks for allowing us the opportunity to assemble to share in worship with you. We ask for your presence in this service to the power of the Holy Spirit to intercede among us. Help us to prepare our hearts to worship you. Remove all manner of negativity that prevents us from concentrating on you. Quicken our conscience to be in your presence. Instill your Holy Spirit in our minds, enabling us to receive in our hearts the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us join our hearts and voices as we sing our first hymn this morning, number 483, Saviour Like a Shepherd. The lyrics will be shared on the screen. screen. Thank you. 
Ramona to lead us in the prayer of intercession and confession. <clears throat> Let us all bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we pray for those in authority over us, those who have raised up us to lead in our Presbyterian church throughout the country our own pastoral region, our communities, and our nation. Help them listen to you and govern well. And for us here this morning, Lord, to illuminate your word and draw us into a deeper, stronger faith, build up our relationship. Lord, illuminate your word and draw us into a deeper, stronger faith. Build up our relationship with you and each other. Give your special attention and healing to the sick who cannot be with us. Give your supernatural joy to those who are grieving and hurting this morning, Lord. Lay a heavy hand on those who have need to feel your presence today. And bring conviction to the prideful and elevate the humble among us. Most merciful God and Redeemer of compassion, out of our weakness, we turn to you, recognizing that we are utterly unworthy to be called your children. We pray that you will be merciful to us tonight as we confess our many sins to you. We acknowledge that we have fallen short of your standards and we have deceived you, ourselves and others. We have broken our vows of confirmation and baptism. Lord, forgive us for our sinfulness. Forgive us when we do what we know we should not have done and when we neglect things we know we should have done. Forgive us when we make complicated that which you have made to be simple, and when we make difficult 
that which you have made to be easy. Forgive us when we confuse right and wrong and lead others astray by our confusion. Forgive us for putting conditions of love and forgiveness when you have given us the capacity for and the example of perfect love and forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for all the ways we have gone wrong and help us also to forgive others. Grant us the grace of true repentance so that we may not only confess our sins, but also lament and forsake them with the whole heart and then beat the fruit of the righteousness. O great redeemer of humanity, despite our weakness, you have greatly blessed us, but we have been ungrateful. You have forgiven us, but we have been forgiven. With you, we have nothing to hope for. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will bring us to the true repentance and full of forgiveness, that we might live through Jesus Christ who died for us. These mercies we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. This will be read to us by Miss Christine. I'm reading from the Good News Bible. John, chapter, John, chapter 1, 10 to 14, entitled, The Word of Life. The Word was in God. The Word was in the world, and through God made the world through him. Yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believe in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by nature, natural means. That is by being born as not the children of the human father. God himself was the father, was their father. The world became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the father's only son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Amen. Our thanksgiving hymn this morning can be found in our hymn books, uh, number 625, Seek Ye First. The lyrics will be shared on the screen. Also, at this time, if you have your offering, you can put that aside to be blessed.
Alleluia. Glory to God. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give thanks and praise to our Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this moment not to ask for anything, but to give you all the thanks that you deserve for what you have done for us and continue to do for us every single moment of every day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to wake up this morning to see this new day and to enjoy the beauty of your creation all around us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for choosing us, for calling us, for knowing us by name. We appreciate you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on that old rugged cross for the redemption of our sins. We thank you, Jesus, for accepting to bear the pain, the anguish and the suffering on that cross. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you shower upon us every day. We even thank you for the trials, Lord, because we know that they help to shape us into who you want us to be. And we thank you that when we go through those trials, Lord, you hear our cries, you dry our tears, and you're always with us. Lord, we thank you for the strength that you give us to endure all those trials. We thank you for the hope that you give us in those times of trouble. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, our guide. Lord, we thank you for the protection that you give us day in and day out, not just for ourselves, for our loved ones too. We thank you for the health, for the strength, for forgiveness, for peace, for joy. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for your never failing, never ending and unconditional love. Lord, we thank you for the gifts and the talents that you have blessed each and every one of us with. We thank you for the ability to give back just a small token of the magnitude of the plenty that you bless us with, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will sanctify it, multiply it, bless it, that it will bear good fruit in this part of your vineyard. We pray all this in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the message this morning, I will invite Abigail to lead us with an anthem. Who 
grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. You Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander, and my faith will make me stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander. And my faith will make me stronger in the presence of my Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The message this morning will be delivered by Susan Arjun Jagmohan of the Barakpur, Pastor, uh, Barakpur Union Presbyterian Church. Susan has been an avid participant in the RDC for several years. Um, many of you will know that um, she's chaired many of our events. Uh, she's been uh, an in-house stand-up comedian. She's not only known for her jokes and her singing voice, but also for her passion for teaching. She has always been active in Sunday school, where she showcases her skills in craft and puppetry. She is a teacher at Jordan Hill Presbyterian School, a partner and mother of two to the children, Matthias, and Michaela. I now invite Susan to deliver this morning's message. Thank you, Michael, and um, a blessed morning to everyone, all our viewers this morning. I hope you all are doing well in these most difficult times. 
Now, before we get into this morning's message, let us bow our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed and most precious Father, we, your people, come before you this morning with open hearts and an open mind, ready to receive what you have in store for us. Lord, I pray that you will bless this word, that it may touch the lives of many. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. As children of the Most High God, we have certain expectations. What do you expect God to do for us in times of trouble? Will he leave us to suffer in our times of need? Or will he come to our rescue, providing that we know how to call upon him? The theme for today's service is understanding your identity in stressful times. My friends, when we look at the world today, we can all agree that we are indeed living in stressful times. Every day we worry about what tomorrow holds. We hear something new every day about this variant, that vaccine, so many deaths, COVID protocols, who is positive, who is negative, and the list goes on endlessly. This is one of the stressful situations we are facing among others. Sometimes when facing these difficulties in life, we have nowhere to turn. And oftentimes we forget our identity. Now the definition of identity is who you are, the way you think about yourself, the way you are viewed by the world, and the characteristics that define you. For example, your identity can be your name. We all know and understand this, but today I am talking about our identity from God the Father who made us. We often forget that we are children of the living God. As our scripture passage in John says, but many as received him to them, gave him power to become sons and daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. God empowers us when we call upon him. Oftentimes when we face certain situations in life, where is the first place we go? Some go to post on Facebook, they go to tell a friend, they even go to Google for advice but that's the wrong G to go to. You need to go to the G who is God. As children of God, we have certain privileges that others may not. For example, our God says, seek and you will find. He says, ask and it shall be given. And lastly, knock and the door will be opened for you. He will open the door for miracles, opportunities, blessings, finances, and the list goes on. My friends, don't we all want these things in our lives? Don't we all want a miracle now and then? Don't we all need finances in difficult situations? Sometimes when we are fed up and think that things cannot go right anymore. But isn't it amazing? that having a God that hears us when we seek him. As God's children, we must understand that we can do this whenever we are in the face of adversity. He is always there to receive us into his ever-loving hands. He will never leave you by the wayside. He will pick you up and carry you back home. Jesus is our deliverer and he knows the voice of his children when they need him. As children of God, we have many weapons we can use in stressful times. And another one I'd like to talk to you about is prayer and supplication. Sometimes we think that our problems are too much to bear. Sometimes we can't seem to explain it to God. But let me tell you this, God understands the language of tears. 
He knows what's in our hearts. We may not know what to say, but when we as children of God come before him, broken by life, he is the one that will fix us. Sometimes when you are alone, crying on your bed, thinking about all the problems you have, wondering how it will come to us to a solution, just remember a simple prayer can go a long way. And this is one of the most essential tools we have when we identify as children of God. You need to remember when we get on our knees, the devil flees. We, and lastly, we must believe in order to receive. This is a very popular statement by many of us, but we really fail to understand it. When we are in the horns of a dilemma, we are quick to worry and stress out about simple things and want to give up. That is our normal human nature. When we are worried about something, we stress about it, we go on the outside to, for help. But I'm telling you today that we need to pray about certain situations and hope that it passes, right? But we hope that it passes. But hoping is not, or is not always, it will not always get you anywhere. You need to believe. And as children of God, we stand on the belief that Jesus Christ is the son of man. We believe he came to save us from our sins. As believers in Christ, we too must believe that he can get us out of any situation we are facing. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but we need to have that belief that God is on our side at all times. We must be so certain that yes, our Lord will deliver me from whatever situation I'm facing. I remember a few years ago, I was facing quite a dilemma where I had to get a certain amount of finances in order to do an important medical examination. I admitted I was worried, I was stressed out as any of us will be in a situation like that. But it was the easy thing to do, right? Sit and worry and cry and stress and send up your blood pressure till it goes sky high, making things worse. But then I remember who I was. I identified myself as a child of God. I knew the promises of my heavenly father. I remembered that I am the apple of his eye, that he will never leave or forsake me that he gives his children peace. So then I decided to activate my weapon of prayer. I sought God. I was on my knees praying for a miracle. After I was finished, without a doubt in my heart, I believed that God will see me through. As I said, it's easier said than done, but still I tried. I, it didn't make a half an hour after I received a call that the financial aid will be provided. It was a, indeed a testimony I knew that as a child of God, I, when I believe, I know I will receive. God came through me, God came through for me many times and this was just one example. I know I am a child of God and just as parents look out for their children, God will look out for us as well. So, I know my message is not long, so I'm going to close now by saying, understanding your identity is very important. Knowing that you are a child of God gives you endless power through Christ. He will unlock so many doors for you. He will wipe your stress away because God loves all his children and he doesn't want to see us hurt or dismayed. He may test us at times, but we must know to be strong and we must understand that God recognizes his children. Our God loves his children. Only when we accept our true identity, that is when we will see the mountains move from our paths. Only then we'll truly understand 
what it means to be the child of a most high king. So my friends, don't be ashamed of your identity. This uh, being knowing your identity in God is a very broad topic. And I have just spoken a little bit and touched on a little bit, knowing your authority and who you are. But there are many, many other ways in which we can know our identity and truly understand our identity. But remember, when we are faced with situ certain situations in our life, seek, pray, and believe. Learn to embrace all the benefits it has for being a child of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. Seek, pray, and believe. We are all children of God. When we get on our knees, the devil will flee. I now invite Miss Allison to lead us in the pastoral prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving heavenly father, we thy humble servants come before your throne of grace. Heavenly father, we give you thanks and praise. For we call you Father, because we are your children through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shine more of his light into our hearts so that we may come to know you more and to love you more each day. Father, we thank you for the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh and came to dwell among us as the unique and only begotten son of God, who alone qualifies to be our redeemer. You have told us to seek your presence continually, and we do that now. You have told us to remember the wondrous works you have done, and we do that now. You are our God, and there is none like you. We thank you, O Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed on our lives, for the gift of life, health, strength, family. The air that we breathe, the roof over our heads, the food on our tables, and for the ability to earn, we give you thanks, O oh God. Father, this morning we bring before you members of our congregation, and by extension our region, those with heavy hearts and troubled minds. You alone, O oh God, know what they are facing. Hear their cry, O oh God, comfort them, and grant them the encouragement and grace to overcome their physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and financial burdens. There are many among us today with special needs of their own and need your special touch and reassurance right now. There are numerous problems and we don't understand why these things come into our lives. And we often tempted to question you and our faith is tested sometimes to the limit. We pray that our faith will not fail during these times. We pray, O oh Lord, for the Gobin family this morning as they go through this emotional period of having a loved one battle with COVID. Loving God, hope of the poor and source of all health, look with compassion upon your children who suffer under the weight of this pandemic and strengthen those who labor for our health all our doctors, nurses, and caregivers. For those afflicted with sickness and suffering, O oh Lord, restore them to good health. We remember this morning our dear sister, Shalima, departed this life and to be in the arms of our maker. We thank you for the time spent with her and the relationship we shared with her. We pray, O oh God, for your grace on her son, Aidan, Grant him the comfort and strength that he needs to bear the loss of his mother. Guide his footsteps, O Lord, and protect him and help him to make the right choices and decisions as he continue in his journey of life. Bless our church and its leadership, our minister, church workers, and boards within our churches. 
Help us to live according to your will. And may all that the church strive to do be to your honor and your glory. We pray for the leaders of our nation today. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge to make the right decisions and for our country and guide them to be fair and just in their undertaking. Hear our humble cries and petition, O Lord. And we thank you in advance for answered prayers. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray to see, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. 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 Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 349. My hope is built. Please sing along to the lyrics on the screen. presiding elder, Mr. William Goku, to close us off with a prayer of dismissal and benediction. 
Thank you very much, Michael. And as we prepare for dismissal this morning, I invite you once more to remember all those who have been afflicted with sicknesses and illnesses, those who have been seriously affected by the pandemic. We pray for them and we ask your Holy Spirit to ease their burden. I now invite you to bow with me in prayer. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let thy bright beams arise, dispel the darkness of our minds, and open all our eyes. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Revive our drooping fate, our doubts and fears remove, and kindle in our hearts and our breasts the flames of never dying love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Dwell, therefore, in our hearts, our minds from bondage free. Then shall we know and praise and love the Father, the Son, and the O Holy God. As we prepare to leave the sanctuary of our homes, to go out into the world and to continue our labors, we ask for your guidance, O oh Father. We ask your blessing upon all your people who have shared in this morning's service. For all those who are on the various platforms, we thank you for those who have shared their ability in bringing to you your message to your people. And therefore, God, as we leave and as we go forth, O oh Lord, O oh God, to the work of another day, still surrounded by the wonderful loving kindness, still pledged to thy loyal service, still standing in thy strength and not on our own. We know, remember that the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you. God the Father, bless you and keep you. God the Son, save you and direct you. God the Spirit, teach you and guide you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 We now listen to the Bened choral benediction.
Thank you all very much for joining in in this morning's service. And a special thanks to, the, to Michael, the chairman of the RDC, and all those who have participated. This morning, you have truly highlighted your talent, your Christian faith in God. And one of the good things of the pandemic and the shutdown, it has enabled us to unearth a lot of hidden and latent talents in our Presbyterian church. And I thank you all for this. And as we eagerly await the reopening of our church from the 6th of September, may God continue to bless you all in all that you do. Thank you all very much. Yes.